going to start off this InDesign tutorial with a warning. Pay attention. What I'm going to be talking about today in this video is the use of tabs. Tabs are great when you know how they work or they can be a nightmare and tear your file apart. So I'm going to go to file and open here and in chapter six, I have only one folder. It's all about tabs. Okay, I'm going to start with this file. And what I have is just a simple chart layout with information. Okay, I want to show in a more organized manner all this data. Who the salesperson was, how many bottles they opened, how many bottles they sold, what was the profit. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four categories, and I have four columns of information. The salesperson, the number of bottles open, the number of bottles sold, the number or the profit that we made. But I just typed it in like this. That's just a huge mess. Okay, I want to make sense of it all. I want to line everything up. I want people to read across. I have a big open space and very little information. So the whole idea of tabs is those little dots that lead your eye over to more information, like you would see on a menu. So if I clicked here just to type something is something out, I would say cheese. I can spell cheese pizza. What you would never ever do is type period, 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 and then say 9.95. Okay, because the next line will not necessarily line up here. Tabs are all about lining up columns of information or lines of information. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Look at any menu. You will see tons of tabs. Tabs and what they call leaders little dots that lead your eye across the page. So what I'm gonna do is take my black arrow, select this text frame where all my text is, and I want it away from the edges of the box. So I'm gonna to go to Object Menu, Text Frame Options, and with the preview turned on, I have a feature called Inset Spacing. I'm gonna turn this little chain off because I want to work with specific sides, not all four. Like I'm not concerned with the bottom or the right. I'm concerned with keeping my type away from the top edge. So I'm going to go to the top field and just hit the up arrow once or twice. There we go. I want to keep my type away from the left side of the box. So I'll go to the left field and hit the up arrow once. Let's go twice right there. That looks good enough. And I'll click OK. So at least I'm keeping my type away from the borders. Now, what I want to do is start to organize the look of this type. So I'm going to highlight all the type. And in fact, you got to think about this carefully. I am going to be treating the categories separately from the summation of information. So I don't want to highlight everything because I'm going to deal with this line totally different than these lines. Okay, so I'm going to highlight just this line of text and I will go to Type Menu, Tabs, right up here. Okay, the first thing you want to do is do not move this ruler. It lines up with your text. It lines up with the edge of the box. Do not move the ruler. Okay, over here on the left, you've got four arrows. This is the left tab. You line your text up with the left side of the type. This is how to center your type or indicate where you want the type centered. This is how to line up your type according to the last letter, a right aligned tab. And this is called a decimal tab for lining up prices. Okay, and I've covered all that. So what I want to do is click this centered tab. And what I'm basically telling InDesign now is I want the word salesperson. I want the center of that 
to be right at this half inch mark. So you notice a very skinny space above this ruler. I wish they made this bigger so you could work, but it's really small. So I want a centered tab right in this space right there at the half inch mark. Okay, number of bottles open. I'm gonna click and drag and I want the center of that to show up on eh, maybe right here. Go half an inch and two more marks over. So one and five eighths. The number sold, I want that to line up right over here at about two and three quarters. And let's go to, yeah, two and seven eighths. There we go. You, know, you don't have to measure all these out. Just click and drag. And the word profit, I want the center of that word to line up right about there. So now I've indicated these little markers. All I have to do now is take my type tool, click right after the word salesperson and hit the tab key. Okay, didn't move the word salesperson yet. So let's go through the rest. Go to bottles opened, click right before that, hit tab. Okay, I can click at the beginning of salesperson, hit tab, there we go. Number of bottles opened is centered underneath that arrow. Salesperson is centered. I'll click right between sold and profit and hit tab. Sold, number sold is centered, profit is centered. And now I look at that and go, well, I don't like this space right here. Okay, I was just kind of guessing. So maybe I'll take the arrow here and just push that over a little more and the word kind of follows along with it. So I've got a more evenly spaced group of categories. All right, I think that looks good. So I'm gonna close this up and now I'm gonna highlight all the other information. Type, tabs. It resets my ruler. And now I want to line up all the names according to the left edge of their names. No, actually, you know what? Since these are centered, let's go with centered. I think that would be better. Centered tab. I want the names to go right here. Be lined up, centered right underneath that category. Now I'm gonna come over and say number of bottles open will be centered right here, but there's a big gap between the salesperson and the number of bottles open. So on this centered tab, I'm gonna click in the leader field. What is gonna show up in the blank space? You have room for two characters. So I'm gonna type period, period. Okay, I'll come over here. The number sold, I want them to be centered right underneath the word sold. There's a big gap, so I'm gonna click in the leader space and type period, period. And then over here for the profit, we're looking at money symbols here, money values. So I'm gonna click, because I want it to show up right about there, but I'm gonna change this arrow tab to a decimal tab. I want the bits of information to line up on their decimals in here. Okay, I'm also gonna lead the eye over, so period, period. And now let's check it out. I'll click right after Chloe, hit tab. Click before Chloe, hit tab, there we go. Click before 40, tab. Click before 250, tab. I'll click before Rachel. Let's try it right from the beginning. Click, tab, click, tab. There we go, it gets it going. Click, tab, click, tab. Click, tab, click, tab, click, tab, click, tab. And we'll do the last one. Click at the very beginning, hit your tab key. Now I click before the next category, hit tab. Click before the next category, hit tab. Click before the last category, hit tab. I will close this ruler up. 
Now, if I look at this, I'm going to pull a guide just to show you. I can pull this guide over and all my decimal points have lined up. So I've got a nice um, alignment for those categories. All my numbers have lined up here, centered right underneath their categories. This all looks really good. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit the letter W, get out and look at our little chart here. And I can see that uh, Chloe opened 23 bottles. She sold 40, not bad. Rachel opened 37 bottles, but she only sold 20. She's, she's drinking away our profit. We didn't make any profit off of her. She's fired. Marie opened 12, but she sold 20, so she's making a profit there. Cool. And Wade, he opened 42. He old, sold 60. We're doing good, except for Rachel. Uh, she opened too many and didn't sell too many, so we got a problem with her. But now that I've done those tabs, I don't like this space right up here. So I could always click, go to object, and go to text frame options. I've got an inset spacing right here. So I'll just push that down a little more to kind of center it in the box. And that looks pretty good. There we go. So that's what tabs are used for, to lead your eye over. These are leaders. They lead your eye to the next column of information. And when you hit tab, all those columns will be perfectly spaced and lined up. Okay, go back through this video, practice with it a couple of times. Get the hang of using tabs. I'm gonna show another tutorial where we're not just working on a blank page. It is actual use of tabs from an actual menu. And they use the tabs in a really creative way. So I'm going to close up this one. And I'll see you in the next tabs tutorial.